Christian, Jesus has called you to fight for God's glory by standing up to Satan's kingdom of darkness. But what are Satan's primary objectives in this raging battle for souls? We'll continue to uncover the biblical truth in today's episode of Invasion of Light podcast. Welcome to Invasion of Light podcast, where we study God's word to equip and ignite you to invade your world with the light of Jesus Christ. I'm JJ Weller. I'm on staff with Message Ministries and Missions and the co-author of Invasion of Light, how Jesus can use you and me to win the battle for souls and societies. And my name is Brian Weller. I'm on staff with Message Ministries and Missions as the director, also co-author of the book and also want to share with you about our mission work. I want to encourage you to go to sharegodshope.com uh, because really all of this is flowing out of our mission work and things that we've learned along the way and right. finally put put down while we couldn't travel too much the last couple of years. <laughs> so, so we really want to encourage you to go to sharegodshope.com and find out about our mission work around the world. And maybe God might call you to help us as we help others to find out about Jesus Christ, Amen. especially in unreached nations. Amen. And we want to encourage you to check out Invasion of Light. Go to invasionoflight.tv. You can get two free chapters, get the ebook really affordably. Yeah. And we want to encourage you to help us spread this biblical message to the whole world. Like this video, subscribe, leave a comment, click the notifications bell, subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcasting service. Now we're on Spotify, Stitcher, yeah. pretty much everywhere. We're yeah. coming out now. So we're really excited about that. And we're just thrilled to have you here. Yeah, we're really excited about all the views that we're getting. And, um, you know, because obviously we're doing this, JJ, because we want to encourage believers and perhaps win some people that don't know Jesus Christ. Amen. And yeah, they can be, as Jude put it, snatched from the fire yep. and uh, brought into God's glory and a wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ. So thank you for taking the time to listen. And, and we pray we're a blessing. And please feel free to write us if there is something you'd like us to address in a future program or something like that as well. Amen. Well, Dad, can you lead us in prayer to open up our hearts to the Lord? Father God, we thank you that you are not the author of confusion, God. You're the author of life. And Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, that name above every name, that name that causes demons to tremble at the sound of it. And we ask you that you would lead us, you would guide us, and even as Jesus said, he spoke the things that you told him to speak, that we could speak some of those things today as well, Lord. Help us to share from your heart and not just our own, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's get into our teaching content for today. Today, we're continuing in part two of this mini-series about the objectives of Satan's kingdom. Before we talked about our objectives as part of the kingdom of light of God's kingdom, now we're talking about the objectives of our enemies so that we can be aware of what Satan wants to do to destroy lives, and even he would like, if he could, to destroy us. But we're protected yeah. by the blood of Jesus as we follow him, right? Well, plus, if you think, you know, last week I mentioned how foolish it would be for an actual soldier to go out without knowing their enemy. Yeah. But, you know, I thought about that a little bit further. How foolish it is or would be for an actual soldier to go out into battle and not have the weapons of their warfare, yeah. not have the ammunition they need, not have the water that they need. And, and it's the same spiritually. How can we, how can we win in a battle against the enemies that, that are in the kingdom of darkness unless we have the weapons of our warfare ready? And that's why Paul said that we're to put on the whole armor of God. Amen. And we need to do that daily. Yes. Amen. Yeah. yeah. We need to do a show on that later too as well. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk about Satan's second objective in the invasion of darkness, which is to blind people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the tragic thing, is that Satan, unlike Christians, Satan doesn't need to go out and win souls. No. He already has everyone in his destructive grip. It says in 1 John 5, 19, we know that we are from God, talking about those who trust and follow Jesus, but the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. So you go down the street, you need to understand, Satan isn't trying to get people. Right. He already has them. Yeah. It says that the whole world, without exception, everyone who's not following Jesus, right. is in the power of the evil one. So all that Satan wants to do is to blind them to the message that would get him out of his power. Right. Because Jesus on the cross, it says that he spoiled principalities and powers triumphing over them in it. It says he cast out the ruler of this world. 
that he destroyed the one who had the power of death in the book of Hebrews. So now Satan just wants to keep people from understanding what Jesus did. So it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Well, you know, when I when we read that, I think about people are lost. And when you're lost, you have no hope. And having been someone that lived in the world and, and remembers what it feels like, um, the unfortunate thing is there weren't enough warnings. And it's like Jude talks about we need to snatch people from the fire. And I'm thinking, let's say there's a fire in an apartment building. And um, some people that are right there in the flames, they know it and they're going to run out. But they're warning other people saying, there's a fire, there's a fire. And, and unless people, you know, actually see those flames, sometimes they're not running. And we really have to present the gospel in, in a serious enough tone that people know that they do have a future in the fire. Now, we also know that part of the blinding of the gospel is the enemy is convinced even a lot of Christians that there is no fire, that there is no hell, that, yeah. that God is love and God would never do that. Although scripture, he, Jesus talked about hell more than he ever talked about heaven because he wanted to give that warning and he knew people were lost. And, and sometimes people, uh, if they're afraid enough, they start listening. Yeah. And I, th I think it's really important that to cue in on that, that one way that the enemy blinds people from the gospel is we don't share the full, honest gospel. We give them something that might be acceptable. Like if you just pray this prayer, you don't have to repent. You don't have to, you know, quit being a drunkard or any of that. You just pray this prayer and you've got fire insurance. Yeah. And so a lot of people have been blinded to the gospel because they really haven't heard the real gospel. Well, I find that Satan is very strategic with this because I've seen many times that, you know, someone will get up and they'll give a message that would convict someone's heart, that would show them their need of the Savior. Yeah. And then someone will come up directly after and basically contradict whatever was said. Right. You know, or I found even when I was earlier, you know, very much earlier in my Christian life, and I've seen it with other people too, a lot of people, they just live in response to, to biblical Christians, basically. Everything that they say to believers is, I'm sorry that someone told you that your sins would lead you to hell. I'm sorry that they told you that that right. was sin. I'm sorry that they told you that like it says in Psalms, that God is angry with the wicked every day. You know, I mean, there's a way to present the truth, but the truth is we have to present the truth. Right. And if you're in this position where you're apologizing for other people who are preaching what the Bible says, friend, you got to think it through. Right. I say that as someone who did this for a while. <laughs> Satan is very sly. Oh, wow. And he'll make you feel spiritual. When you're working for his team as well. Yeah, without a doubt. And, 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 that, and that's a really sad thing yeah. because we're seeing more and more of it as we get into the latter of the last days. Yeah. I mean, people, people are afraid to be rejected. Yeah. And like you say, they want to appear like they're more godly and more righteous because they're sharing the Jesus' love message. And Jesus is love, Absolutely. but Jesus is also judge. And, right. and like I told somebody one day when they were making excuses for somebody that didn't want to repent of their sins, but yet they led them to the Lord, is that one day that person is going to stand before God and God's not going to say, well, I know Joey told you that and he was a little misinformed, so I'm going to let you in. It's not going to be that way. <laughs> uh, Jesus said the father's committed all judgment to the son and the judge, the son said he committed all judgment to the words that he spoke. And so we're going to be judged by the word. And so we have to preach it very, very clearly. And the enemy has worked so hard in the kingdom of darkness to get Christians, even preachers. Well, let's get rid of that. That offends people. The gospel does offend unless we're seeking truth. Yeah. And then we embrace that offense because we know that offense brings me <laughs> to a place of repentance and the goodness of God leads us to repentance. And, and it's just really important that we bring that out. Well, the thing is we have to realize that Satan wants to keep people sedated. Yeah. He wants to keep people unaware of the reality of their sin and of the reality of Jesus' salvation. You know, I think there was a story that I saw one time uh, on the internet, and it was talking about a, a young woman. Uh, I think she was in her early 30s, mm -hmm. and she was on her way to work. And in the car, she's listening to this popular pop song, Happy, by this uh, musician called Pharrell. Wow. And sh she's posting this video, and she's saying, I'm so happy. This song makes me so happy. 
And then as she's posting this video, she gets in a car crash and she dies. Wow. And I just think there's such a powerful parallel in that because much preaching today and even much entertainment, much music today, both in the world and in the professing church, it's nothing more than a happy song yeah. sedating us on the way to hell. Yeah. There are people, millions of people who, listen, they're headed on the way to hell. It might even be you, friend, today. I hope not. We all have to be aware and surrender our lives to Jesus. It might be you. It might be someone else. But they're sedated on the way to hell. And this music, this entertainment, these movies, yeah. or even this preaching that makes them feel so good about themselves, it's just distracting them yeah. from that day of judgment that's coming. The Bible says it's appointed for every man to die once, and then comes the judgment. That is a date that Satan is aware is coming. And he wants to do whatever he can to keep you and me distracted yeah. Yeah. so that we will hit that day unaware. That we can even say, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. And then we die and we plunge feet first into hell. That's his objective. He doesn't care if he brings you there sad or it brings you there happy. He just wants to kill you. And, and, and that's why one of Satan's objectives is is to keep us from preaching the gospel because when we share the truths in scripture, and I'm not just talking about the message of salvation, yeah. but the things that bring the conviction of the Holy Spirit right, on people, cool. uh, because people need that nudge. They, they, they need that shake of sudden reality that I'm not okay. Yeah. Uh, because without Jesus Christ, we are not. And so it's it's so important that, that we share that message. Yeah, well, that's like, I believe, I might mess up the quote a bit, but George Whitefield said something on these lines. The world is in a deep slumber and nothing but a loud shout will wake, will wake them up. And that doesn't mean that you need to go up to, to your friend and say, hey. Whoa. <laughs> but that we do need to speak with urgency. We, we need to learn the sobriety of God, the holiness of God, and his concern for people, his love for people. I mean, think Jesus is concerned enough for the lost and for you and me that he literally gave his life. He suffered and died. He suffered the wrath of God. His soul was made uh, a sacrifice for sin, Isaiah 53 says, and rose again so that we could be set free from the powers of darkness, so we could be set free from hell, so we could know God and live for his glory. How important that we get this message on the tip of our tongue. And there's different ways to do it. Like yeah. you mentioned the song, the woman singing the song, Happy. One thing I've noticed in Christian music now, a lot of Christian music, it's all praise and worship. And I love praise and worship music, but that generally is not going to reach an unbeliever. I remember <laughs> listening to groups like the Garmo Key in the 80s, Boycott Hell, do 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 Boycott Hell. They had songs that were speaking out. And if you're a young musician or a musician of any age, you need to write songs that speak out yeah. uh, to culture where somebody can say, hey, here's, here's a message I want you to listen to, some great music, where they can hear the gospel that way as well. But we have, because the enemy, he's ruthless. Yeah, well, that's another, ruthless. that's another one of his subtle tactics, I think, because for example, I think there was a band that one day I was listening to one of their songs and I said, wow, they're really... They're doing something uncommon. You know, they're preaching through their songs and, you know, someone maybe could get saved listening to this album. And then I listened to their next albums and it was all praise and worship. Right. And so this is the thing. If you step out and you preach the word, Satan is going to push back. And a lot of times it's not going to be through the unbelievers. A lot of times it's going to be uh, through a sweet little voice that tells you to do something else <laughs> or a sweet or or pushback from, from Christian friends who otherwise are godly people, but they might be misguided in their ideas about the Great Commission. And so we really need to be aware of this. Well, and I think one thing, you know, Christians spend so much energy just trying to get ourselves to keep our heads above water, so yes. to speak. And to me, that's that's lukewarm. Because if most of my spiritual efforts are just to stay, keep my spiritual head above water and have enough hope to get through the day and have enough, you know, joy to get me through this day and what have you, I'm not thriving. Right. And I'm not supposed to be not even just, just a conqueror. I'm supposed to be more than a conqueror. Yeah, You're man. supposed to be more than a conqueror. And, and the enemy is trying to push us down so that we don't go out, so that we don't 
so we don't go out and give hope yeah. uh, to other people. And so we need to get strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, brothers and sisters. Absolutely. Um, it's just so important because it's not just about you. Yeah. And it's not just about me. It's about the people that Jesus wants to reach through us. And we know Jesus paid a great price. You just talked about it, <laughs> you know, to cover our sin. He, he left heaven, came to the earth, went through all kinds of things, rejection, eventually, as we know, the torture of, of the 39 stripes and the crown of thorns and then death in order to bring the message. And, and, and we have to have that same type of heart. Yeah. You know, that we'll love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and, and reach out to, to people that don't know, that are blinded, Amen. getting back to what we were talking about. You know, let's talk about some of the ways that Satan blinds people. This is from Invasion of Light in page 54. In many cases, he'll first seek to keep us oblivious to spiritual realities altogether. If he fails there, he'll often try to mislead us into false worship and idolatry or else to derail our spiritual desire through the pleasures of the world. If this fails, he attempts to inoculate our consciences through pride, legalism, and false standards so we won't see our need of a Savior. If this fails and we find our consciences awakened to the reality of sin, he does whatever he can to make sure we don't seek or understand the gospel message. In the end, he wants to ensure he can keep sinners in his crafts by all means possible. Knowing this, we must fight with all our might for the souls of mankind, never shrinking back from preaching God's word. On with the invasion of light. Number one, first, he tries to keep you oblivious to spiritual realities together. If he can keep you totally distracted and thinking, ah, oh, there's no God, or if there is a God, I don't care, or I'll figure it out after I die, he's happy. He would love to have you totally sedated so that you don't even, you're not even aware that there's anything spiritual in this world. In Mark 4, 15, it says this. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. So through some distraction or, or concern or whatever, he makes it so that whatever they hear doesn't go deep in their hearts so that they don't even really think about it. And you said you really didn't hear much about Jesus in high school, right? No, I really didn't hear the gospel, you know, going through my four years of high school. It basically, I got invited to drug parties, alcohol parties, witches' coven meetings, tarot card readings, all kinds of things. There were all these evangelists out there for, for all the kingdom these different, of darkness. Yeah, for the kingdom of darkness. And they were bold. I mean, uh, you know, they were really bold about it. And, but the sad thing about it is, I think I would have listened. Mm. I think I would have listened earlier and maybe wow. I could have been saved from all the really dumb decisions that I made. I don't know for sure, but um, I know when I started hearing about Jesus, you know, my, my ears, my spiritual ears and my natural ears really perked up. And um, so we, 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 have, we have to be aware and we need to sow those seeds. Yeah, yeah some of them are gonna, the Satan's gonna come and steal and that's why we need to, we need to try to keep watering them. We need to try to keep in touch with people yeah. so that we can uh, further further share the gospel with them. But it's so important. Right, exactly. Because the second way that he's going to try to blind, if he can't keep you totally distracted from spiritual things, is a lot of times he's going to seek to lead you into false worship yeah. or into idolatry. Oh, yeah. If he can't keep you out of a religious mindset, he's going to seek to lead you into false religion. Yeah. That's why it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 20 to 22, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons mm -hmm. and not to God. So false religion is not just like a, a different philosophy. Right. It is actually a worship of demons. He says that when Gentiles, when the nations, those who don't follow Jesus, sacrifice or do religious practices, they are not offering to a God or to an idea, they're making that sacrifice to demons. So that would be a powerful way for Satan to intercept, is someone realizes there is a God, and now, oh, well, I'm gonna go into yoga, or I'm gonna go to Buddhism, right. or I'm gonna go into uh, whatever it is, that's what Satan's often gonna try to do. Right, well, and I mean, we see religions forming all the time. Yeah. And, you know, I remember in the 70s, the Hare Krishnas, you know, yeah. Hare, Hare Krishna. And they were out all over the place, you know, proselytizing, trying to get people to come into Hare Krishna. And, and the thing of it is, it's like the, 
there's nothing more powerful than the gospel. Yeah. Because the gospel will break through all the falsities that the enemy teaches. Right. Because there, there's an answer for everything that we need. The word says there's, you know, all that we need for life and for godliness, he's given to us, yeah. has given to us. So all the tools of our spiritual trade of evangelism and winning people to Jesus Christ have been given to us. Yeah. It, but the enemy, yeah, he's going to he's going to dangle these things out there because I know when I was lost, when someone, you know, invited me to a witch's coven meeting, I'm like, that's, you know, I'd done séances and things like that. It it perked my attention. I started studying it. Um nobody had talked to me about the Bible, so I really wasn't reading that. Yeah. Uh, when somebody told me about doing tarot card readings, I'm like, well, let's let's try that. I mean, it sounded good because it was something different than my day to day life, and 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 I knew I didn't have the answer, and I was seeking. So there are seeking people around you all the time, and and that's why we have to reach out to them before they go down that wrong path because it is hard sometimes to break that religious spirit that yeah. gets in people Absolutely. that comes from a false religion. Yeah. It's very hard to break that. Absolutely. So. And number three, if that doesn't work, if he can't keep you totally spiritually distracted, or number two, if he can't lead you into false religion, and you now have a genuine desire to know who God is, he's going to seek to strangle that spiritual desire through anxieties or pleasures of the world. Mark 4.18 says this, Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life the deceitfulness mm -hmm. of wealth and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. And there's some of you listening here today. Maybe you say, ah, this is all stupid. I'm happy. My life is good. I have what I need. Or I, maybe I don't have the physical things I need, but I have the relationships I need, or I have the pleasures I need. If that's where you are, friend, the Bible says that you're right where Satan wants you. Because when that word drops, into your heart. He's going to try to choke it out with the worries of this life, yeah. the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things. And you know, that's why we need to be on our tippy toes for, all, for others, but also as believers, because he also wants to blind us, which leads us to satanic goal number yeah. three, yeah. that he wants to deceive and inoculate the church. Dad, you had a verse in 1 Peter 5, 8. Would you read that for us? Yeah, I think that's an important verse that we all need to, we should know this verse and we, we should memorize this verse. And I want to read 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to do verses starting in verse 8, where Peter writes, be self-controlled. And in some versions, it says, be sober. And then he goes on, he says, and be alert. And that word for alert is to be vigilant or to be watchful or to be awake. Yeah. Because, because of what we're going to read in a minute, because he goes on to say, your enemy, which is your adversary, your opponent, the devil, diabolos in the Greek, prowls around like a roaring lion. And it's, it's the word he, he goes about. Mm. He, he's occupied with. Yeah. And it's, it's the same word that Jesus used when he talks about us following him, that we're to be occupied yeah. with him. But th that's what the enemy's occupied with. And he goes about as a roaring lion and he's, he's looking for someone to devour. And that word there isn't just looking, it's like he's desiring. Mm. <laughs> he's desiring to devour someone. And every one of those little demon spirits that work underneath him have that same desire. That's to kill, steal, and destroy, which yeah. we started with. And the word for devour, it comes from this word, which means to drown. Mm. They're looking for someone they can drown. And I don't yeah. know if you've ever been in an almost drowned situation, but I have. And, and when you're under that water, you just want air. And that's what the enemy does. He's just going to push, push, push down ruthlessly. But it says this, and this is the good news. <laughs> he says, resist him, standing firm in the faith or being steadfast or strong in the faith. Because you know that your brothers throughout the world are un undergoing the same kind of sufferings and affliction. Mm. And one thing I know, uh, you know, we, we have a pastor that we support in Laos who's in jail right now. Wow. He's in jail for preaching the gospel. There's people in the world that are going through real persecution. Yeah. They're going through real troubles. And many that are listening, you live here in the United States or you live in a country where things are pretty good. And, and we need... 
we need to realize that and we need to really get strong now because we don't know when things like that might show up Absolutely. at our country's doorstep. Because right now, I think a lot of Christians have just gotten so silent because they're so afraid to be canceled. Yeah. And the enemies put that fear, but God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So if we have a spirit of fear, and it may not be a demonic spirit of fear, but it's it's in us. If that's overcoming us and overwhelming us and keeping us from being the fruitful ambassadors that Jesus called us to be, we we've got to resist it. Absolutely. You know, we we've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, yeah. because you know what, the the enemy may not he may not be drowning you, but there's people around you that are drowning. They're drowning in fear. They're drowning in anxiety. They're dry, drowning with no hope whatsoever. And so we are to be uh, alert. I love that word. Be self-controlled. Be alert. Be vigilant. Be yeah. awake. Be watchful. Yeah. At all times. Not just when we want to, <laughs> but at all times. Because going back to what we talked about in the previous episode, we got a target. <laughs> Absolutely. We have a target on us. And the enemy is going to keep shooting those fiery darts. So hold up that shield of faith or yeah. those darts are going to hit. Yeah. I can tell you from experience, no shield of faith, fiery darts hit. Fiery darts wound. Yes. Okay. Fiery darts no good. So I'm not making light of this, but we... we <laughs> You know, the, the beauty of it is we can go out with joy yeah. and we can be led forth with peace. We're not victims. We're the overcomers. Yeah. And we said this before, and I don't mind saying it every show, they overcame through the blood of the lamb, which Amen. is what Jesus did and accomplished and the word of their testimony. Yes. You know, speak God's word out loud. Amen. Speak it. Speak Jesus Christ as Lord out loud. And we will. We can be victorious. We're Amen. called to be victorious. Well, you know, when you're reading that part of that verse about uh, thinking about the sufferings that others experience for the Lord. I remember recently I was reading Tortured for Christ. We talked about that on, on an episode. Um, but as I was reading that, I was just so shocked because Richard Wormbrand explained the tortures that people were suffering. He said, it was living hell. And then he said, it was worse than hell. Yeah. And when I read those words, I realized it really kind of punched me in the gut once again because I realized whatever whatever sufferings I might face or whatever temptations I might face, whatever struggles I might right. face, they're really minimal compared to what the persecuted church right. is experiencing around the world. And if they can face blades being taken to their skin yeah. and watching their children being tortured for their faith, then I can take responding to a little temper that wants to rise up inside of me <laughs> because I have the same Holy Spirit in me that that persecuted yeah. Christian has. Right. And my trial is much smaller right. Minimal. than that pers Minimal. persecuted Christian. Yeah. I love that verse. I believe you mentioned it. It says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yeah. I was reading today in Jesus temptation at the end of the temptation. It says the devil left him and angels ministered to him. And if you resist the devil, sometimes you feel the heat of that temptation that comes together, whether it's anger or, or pride or whatever the thing is, and it feels so hard to resist. But the truth is, keep this in your mind, that temptation is temporary. Yeah. If you resist the devil, he will flee from yeah. you. And just like Jesus in the desert resisted the devil, you'll experience the same thing. The yeah. devil left him and angels ministered to him. Fight through that temptation Definitely. because the Bible says you're under no obligation to sin in the book of Romans. Yeah. You're free. We're free. Glory to God. Yeah. We are free by the blood of the lamb, <clears throat> by the word of our testimony. We can overcome the powers of Satan. And you know, the thing of it is we have to realize we're in a war and there's a lot of battles in a war. Yeah. And you mentioned Jesus in the wilderness. And before you said that, I had that verse in my heart. Yeah. It says that Satan left him for a more opportune time. So we win the victory, we win the battle, yep. we win the victory. He leaves, comes back for a more opportune time. So we have to keep fighting. We yep. have to keep that that full armor of God on at all times. Right. There, there's yeah. that's like there's a Bible verse that says, prepare your minds for action. Yeah, exactly. And so when you're in those lulls, really at all times, but especially when they're in those lulls where it seems like everything is going okay. Like the Bible says, be careful if you think you stand, exactly. lest you fall. Yeah. Prepare your mind for action because Satan knows the plant that he has. 
But God also knows the plans that he has for you and their plans for for good, as it says in Jeremiah 29. And I love that verse too, because basically we're to be instant in season and out yeah. when it comes to the gospel. We're to be prepared. Yep. And not just to be prepared, but when the call comes, prepared to go. Yep. Prepared to speak. Amen. Prepared to pray. And uh God's good. You know, it's like um we said, we've said it before many times. We don't know who came up with this this uh, quote, but the greatest ability is availability. Yeah. And then I always say the second uh, greatest ability is responsibility, the ability to respond yep. uh, when the Lord calls, because God will do great things uh, in and through your life and our lives as we surrender to him Amen. and recognize how great our God is and, and, and the empowerment that he gave us when he gave us the Holy Spirit. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. He'll make it alive. Amen. And, and that's, that's a beautiful promise Amen. we have to remember. And the glorious news, too, is that this battle, for one, it's already been won by Jesus. But two, the battle is temporary because Satan's execution date yep. has been settled. Yep. Satan's final fate is outlined in Revelation 20.10. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Hallelujah. Jesus wins. Satan loses. And so you can hold on to that hope. Yep. And overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. Amen. Dad, would you wrap us out in response to the Lord? Let's do it. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that... Um, that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, we thank you that you came and you sacrificed your life for us, Lord. And God, we thank you that you didn't just come to, to save us. You came to, to give us life in this life. You came to give us a, a purpose and you gave us your plan when you told us to go into all the world and preach the good news of the gospel to every person. And God, we're excited about that opportunity because you also told us that as we go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, you told us that we're to heal the sick and cleanse the lepers and raise Jesus. the dead and cast out demons. And God, we want to be faithful to your command, Lord, that we would rise up in faith, that we would go out in the joy of the Lord, and we'd go out in the power of the Lord, and that you would use us as part of your kingdom of light to set people free from the kingdom of darkness, that they can come into the glorious light of your gospel and be saved. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Invasion of Light podcast. I want to encourage you to continue to follow Invasion of Light podcast. It might be uh, two or three weeks before the next episode comes out because we're going to be on a mission to Peru. Yeah. So we'll keep you posted. Um, and we want to encourage you to check out Invasion of Light, how Jesus can use you and me to win this battle for souls and society. If you love the show, you're going to love the book. It's going to encourage, stir, and strengthen your heart. You can get two free chapters right now at www.invasionoflight.tv, or you can get the ebook really affordably. So we really want to encourage you to get a hold of that. And we want to encourage you to help us get this biblical message to the whole world. Like this video, subscribe, click the notifications bell, leave a comment, let us know your thoughts. Subscribe and leave a review on whatever your favorite podcasting station is. And let's get this biblical message to the whole world. Yeah. And I also want to mention, you know, because we're, we're not here to make any money of any type. Of course. Anything we get from this book goes to support the indigenous missionaries that we support on the yeah. mission field. So I just wanted to clarify that because, you know, we had somebody write, oh, you're selling books. And they... No, no. <laughs> we don't make we've we probably given away as many as we've sold almost. Actually, we're probably losing money. <laughs> we probably are, but but the money goes to support indigenous missionaries. So if you're watching and you're thinking, oh, these guys are charlatans, we just want to clarify that, okay? <laughs> Absolutely. So thanks so much for joining us. And until the next show, let's invade the world with the light of Jesus Christ. 